So this video is on first principles. So you need to know how to derive the derivative or dy over dx for some functions by doing something called first principles and you use a certain equation to do this. Now, really quick before I do it, I'm just gonna show you where this equation actually comes from. I wanna exaggerate that you don't actually need to know this for exams and can skip to this time frame if you're not really that interested, that's completely fine. I just think understanding how and where this equation comes from can be quite useful to you understanding how differentiation works and how the equation works itself. So let's consider the most basic curve uh, x squared. So fx is equal to x squared and we've drawn a tangent on it at a certain point and just a quick reminder from last video if we draw a tangent at a particular point on the curve and let's say this uh, tangent has the equation y is equal to mx plus c the gradient of this tangent is the gradient of this curve at that particular point on the curve. So this is the same graph, we've just zoomed it in loads. And we want to find the gradient of this tangent down here. Because we find the gradient of this tangent at this point, therefore we can find the gradient of the curve at this specific point. So let's define some points. So let's say that the point where the tangent touches the curve is called A. And A has the coordinates, so the X coordinate we'll just call X. And the Y coordinate is going to be f of x. Hopefully you understand um, this notation when we say f of x. Basically what we're saying is it's the y coordinate because we're plugging x into this function up here so therefore f of x is just going to be the y coordinate. Um, have a look at the functions vid in um, chapter 2 if you don't fully understand this notation because I'm going to be using it a lot for this explanation. And let's say we have another point and let's say it's here and this point is further along and up the curve and we're going to call this point b and b has the coordinate so it has the x coordinate x so this is the same number down here but then we're going to have plus h where h is just a number it doesn't really matter what the number is it's going to be one two three four something like that but the point being it's a positive number so that this is further along this curve here. And therefore the y coordinate is going to be f of x plus h. It's going to be f of x plus h because instead of plugging in x uh, for the function we're now plugging in x plus h because this is the x coordinate here. And as a result you can see that this is further up the curve than this point here. It's further up than this. And h is just a number and let's just start off by saying that h is equal to 10 and hopefully you're able to see that we can draw a line connecting a and b a straight line like this and let's call this line a b so as we make h smaller and smaller and smaller hopefully you can see that the line a b looks increasingly like the tangent especially in terms of its gradient and this is especially the case when h is extremely small such as when h is equal to 0 0.01 this line here is very similar to the line of the tangent. So we can say that when h approaches zero, this just basically means that when h approaches zero, when h gets really, really small to the point where it gets closer and closer to zero. When h approaches, to ze uh, approaches zero, we can say that the line AB is approximately equal to the tangent. We can see this already for h is equal to 0 0.01, but when we get even smaller, it um, becomes even more evident. So much so that we can actually get rid of the approximate sign and just say they're equal to each other. And therefore, we can say that when h approaches 0, we can say that the gradient of line AB is equal to the gradient of the tangent and as we know the properties of the tangent and the curve that the gradient of the tangent at this point is going to be equal to the gradient of the curve at this point we can therefore say that this is also equal to the gradient of the curve at the point a here. So hopefully this makes sense so far, but you might be thinking at this point, why does this matter at all? Because unlike the tangent, we can calculate the gradient of line AB, and then from that we can then just find the gradient of the curve 
at A. And why can we do this? Well, because we know two coordinates on line AB. We know A and we know B. Recall that the gradient is equal to Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, where this is where we have two coordinates, um, X1 and Y1, and then another coordinate, X2, Y2. So therefore, we can just sub in the values for what we have here in order to make an expression. So let's say that this is X2 and Y2, and this is X1 and Y1. We can therefore say that Y2 will be this, and then minus Y1, which is this. And this is all over X2, which is X plus H, minus, and then X. And we can simplify this to do F of X plus H minus F of X over, and then the two X's cancel out in order to give H. And because X can be any value, on the line, it can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. We've actually created the derivative here of f of f of dash of x. But one thing to remember is this is only true when h approaches zero. It's not true for when h is equal to 10 because this is too big and this line looks nothing like the gradient. So we just have to state that f dash of x is equal to the limit when h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So this here is the key equation that you need to know. You don't need any of this explanation. Um, it's not examinable, but I thought it might help understand differentiation and this topic is not the end of the world if you don't fully understand it. This equation is also given in the formula booklet and you might be wondering precisely what this uh, thing here means, the li limb of when h approaches to zero, as you might not have seen it before. It basically means the limit when h approaches to zero and it doesn't really actually mean anything um, in terms of your working out. It basically just means we're considering very small values of h, such as that h is very close to zero, like 0 0.001 and 0 0.00001, but not actually when h is equal to zero, because then we'd be dividing by zero, and obviously we can't do that. So here's a typical exam question um, that they could ask you. I'm using the example that we used in the explanation where f of x is equal to x squared. And we need to prove from first principles that the derivative of x squared is 2x. Now, of course, we know from the previous video that we know that the derivative of x squared is 2x from the formula nx of n minus 1. But we need to prove it using first principles. And we need to use it using this formula. Now, firstly, this f of x plus h, go back to chapter 4, um, vids, the translations part of the transformations um, video. But when we say that f is equal to uh, f of x plus h, what we're saying is that we have f of x here. We're saying that we replace x with x plus h. We're replacing x with x plus h. So the way we write this is f dash of x is equal to the limit as h approaches zero. We need to write this for every single step as we need to show that we're only considering when h and is very small and approaching zero. So we replace x, uh, we replace x with x plus h. So we write this as x plus h squared instead of x squared. And then minus f of x is just x squared over h. We can do some simplifying. So again, please write that the limit as h approaches 0, as we're still considering small values of um, h for every single step, is equal to x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. That's the um, bracket expanded, minus x squared over h h and this is equal to the limit again as h approaches zero these two terms cancel out to give 2x h plus h squared over h and we can simplify this again because h is present in all the terms so we can cancel out to do the limit as h approaches zero of 2x plus 
h. Now you notice now that we no longer have um, h in the denominator. We don't have this awkward part now because remember before we can't say that h is actually equal to zero because it's in the denominator like this. But now we've got rid of it. So now we can actually say that h is equal to zero. And if we say that, this goes away because this is just h. But h is not present in 2x. So therefore, we can say that f dash of x when h is equal to zero is equal to 2x. We we'll keep saying throughout that h is approaching zero, but now it's um, because it's so small, we can approximate it as equal to zero, which we couldn't do before because it's in the denominator. And therefore, this is the final answer, and this is the proof of it that you need to do. So here's another exam question. Now, again, the, uh, the exam questions will be like this. It will be nothing to do with the explanation that I went through. That's um, that's not examinable. So we need to prove from the first principles that the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. Um, now, again, we know this from the rules of differentiation. That this is the case. We need to prove it from first principles. So let's do the same thing. So f dash of x is equal to, remember, to write the limit as h approaches 0. Of, so remember, you replace x with x plus h so it's going to be x plus h cubed minus x cubed over h let's do this um, expansion over here because it can be quite difficult so x plus h cubed is equal to x plus h x plus h x plus h which is equal to so we're going to do this bracket first. It's going to be x squared plus 2hx plus h squared and then x plus h. And then what we can do is we can expand these two brackets. So x squared times um, x is x cubed. 2hx times x is plus 2hx squared. h squared plus x is plus h squared x h times um, x squared is plus h x squared h times 2 h x is plus 2 h squared x and then h squared times h is plus h cubed which we can simplify to x cubed and then these two um, are the same so therefore we can add these to get plus 3 h x squared these two are the same to get plus 3 h squared x and then this is just plus h cubed again you could use a binomial expansion if you wanted to i just um expanded it um like this so therefore we can write this as the limit as h approaches zero of and then we rewrite this whole thing as h cubed plus 3 h x squared plus 3h squared x plus h cubed and then minus the x cubed over h. These two cancel out in order to give the limit as h approaches 0 of 3hx squared plus 3h squared x plus h cubed over h and then h is in all the terms so we can simplify to the limit as h approaches zero of 3x squared plus 3hx plus h squared. So sorry, I just had to clear some um, space. So now we no longer have the thing where we have h in the denominator. So now we can basically say that h is equal to zero. So the way I would write this is because we have terms um, where um, uh, we have h in. What I would write is as h approaches zero, I would clarify what is going to um, be also um, approaching um, h um so therefore I can show the examiner that I understand what's going on. So as h approaches 0, 3hx is also going to approach 0 as so it's got the h term in it. And also h squared is obviously going to approach 0. So if we can approximate the h is equal to 0, therefore we can say that these are equal to it as well. So therefore we can say that f dash of x is just equal 
to 3x squared as all the other terms cancel out and that's the final answer now this uh, kind of little statement here i don't think it's the end of the world if you don't put this but i've seen it in kind of like exam mark schemes just for as h approaches to zero and kind of state the other things that approach zero at the same time so you can show that you can also cancel these out and equal them to zero so here's a question on first principles. I'll give you the equation because you'd be given it in the formula booklet. So pause the video, have a go, and I'll go through the answers in about five seconds. Okay, so let's call the 3x squared the fx. So it's going to be fx is equal to 3x squared. So that means that f dash of x is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of so remember um for x plus h we replace the x with the x plus h so it's going to be three x plus h squared minus and then f of x so three x squared over h let's expand the bracket so the limit as h approaches zero of three and then it's x squared plus 2hx plus h squared bracket minus 3x squared over h. Let's expand the brackets again. So again, it's the limit as h approaches 0 of, and then it's 3x squared plus 6hx plus 3h squared minus 3x squared over h and then these two cancel out to give the limit again as h approaches 0 of 6hx plus 3h squared over h and then we can cancel out the h's to give the limit again as h approaches 0 of 6x plus 3h and then as h approaches 0 3h will also approach 0 so therefore f dash of x is going to equal we'll get rid of the uh, limb the limb of h approaches 0 now this will go away because this is 0 so it's just 6x like the um, answer says so that's the final answer